click on file and go down to open scene and let's open up gur start.mb okay so here we have our reference images and you'll notice that um, we've got an additional arm to the side here and I'll explain why exactly I drew that additional arm for the reference image um, when we get to modeling the modeling part of the um, arm on this character so for now we're gonna start with the body right here so I'm just going to, I'm gonna create a sphere right here just click on that once drop it in the center of the scene and I'll move this up and I'll move this kind of line it up with the body here over here on the side panel I'm gonna move this back slightly so you can look at my translate Z value here it's about 0.13 all right, and I'm going to go to my inputs for Polysphere 1, and let's change our subdivision axis to 12, and the height to 8. Okay, now I need to be able to see through the sphere that we've chosen for our body, so let's go up to Window, Rendering Editors, and then Hypershade. I'll create a new Lambert. I will double click on Lambert 4 and I'll rename this to Transparent Mat. I'll choose a color, any color, and I'll move the transparency slider to the right. I'll take this, move my mouse over the transparent mat in the hypershade, hold down the middle mouse button and drag onto the sphere. Okay, so we're done with the hypershade for now, so I'm going to close that. Over here, I don't need the attribute editor anymore, so I'm going to switch over to my channel box. Okay. So I'm going to select the sphere and actually scale this down a little bit and move this down. So basically, I want the bottom side of the sphere to match up with the reference image. So I can see in both the side view and the front view, it's matching up. Now I'm going to right click and go to vertex and select all the vertices, basically all the vertices higher than the midpoint of this sphere. So I'm going to hit R for my scale tool and I will use the green box and I'll scale towards the center of the scale tool. This should turn blue. And I don't want to scale all the way so that it's flat. I just want to have a little bit of a curve at the top there. Now I'm going to press W and move these vertices up and line up with the reference image. Okay. So I'll right click on this object and go to object mode and let's take this and name this. We'll call this body. Alright, ready for the next one. So let's drop in a new sphere. I'll move this up. I'll go over here to my inputs. I'll click on Polysphere 2. Once again, I'm going to change the subdivision axis to 12 and the subdivision's height to 8. And I'll press return. And let's see, we're going to just move this back slightly. And let's go back to my hypershade and drag on this transparent material. So I'll hold down the middle mouse button over the transparent mat and drag it onto the sphere. Okay. I'll just minimize the hypershade because we're going to need that again. So I'll move this down to the bottom. And actually, let's line this up with the body. So I'm looking at I'm looking at this center line on the body and I'm looking at the center line on this sphere and just lining those two up. Okay. But you know we can and I'm going to just move this up slightly because I can see I need to scale this sphere up. So make sure that you scale from the center using this yellow box in the center of the scale tool. I'm just going to match this up with the reference image here. 
All right, now I'm going to right click and go to vertex and select the vertices on the top side of the sphere. Hit R, scale this up a little bit, hit W, and then move these vertices up. And then I'll press R and I'll scale out from the center using the yellow box right here. Okay. So I'll, let's see here. Let me just double check the top. Okay. So starting at the bottom here, I'm going to right click and go to Edge. And I'm going to go to Edit Mesh and then Insert Edge Loop Tool. And I'm going to insert an edge loop right next to this bottom the lowest loop on the shape here. So I'm just going to insert one right above that. And then I'll hit Q for my selection tool and then I'm going to double click on the edge right below the edge that I just created. Now I'm going to go to my side panel here and I'll hit W, move this down, and I'll hit R and scale this in. So now, I'm going to hit F to frame that edge right there. I'm going to right click, go to face, and I'm going to select all of the faces going all the way around here. So press Q for your selection tool, hold down shift, and let's select all of these going all the way around. Okay, now I'm going to hit extrude. And then I'm going to press W and move this extrusion straight down. And I'm just checking in my panels here. Do I have, it's roughly the size of the reference image there. So that's OK. All right, let's now go to the top of the head. And I'm going to do the same thing at the top. I'm going to go to Edit Mesh and then insert edge loop tool and I'm gonna click right next to this top loop and add another edge loop here now press Q for my selection tool double click on the inner edge loop here press R for my scale tool and let's go up so I'm going to scale this in and move it up and I'm trying to scale this so that it's the same size as the area that needs to be extruded up for his little antenna. So I can see the um, the edge right here. It's well, it's a little bit hard to see, but it's roughly the same size as the area that needs to be extruded up. So let's hit Q, right click go to face and select these faces and I'll hit the extrude button right here and I'll go up and I'm gonna hit R for my scale tool and scale this in let's take a look here hit E for my rotate tool and rotate and move it over slightly here. Okay, I'm going to press extrude again and go up. Hit R and scale this in and move this over and rotate. I'll press extrude again, go out, press R and scale in from the center. And one more time, extrude up, press R, scale in from the center, press W this time and move it down a little bit. Okay. I'll right click, go to object mode. 
And I think what I want to do is make a few adjustments here. So I'm going to right click, go to edge, and I'll double click on this edge right here where the antenna starts. I'm going to hit R for my scale tool, scale this in. I just want to make this whole thing a little bit skinnier. So press Q for your selection tool, double click on a loop, and then use your scale tool to scale it to make it skinnier. Okay. So I'll right click, go to object mode, and let's add his little sphere at the top right here. So I'll click on the sphere button right here, and once again, I'm going to change the subdivision axis to 12 and the subdivision height to 8. And press, make sure you press return after you type in each number. Scale this down, hit W, move it up, and let's see here. Just move this over, hit R, scale this down some more, and I'll hit E for my rotate tool, and I'm going to rotate this, and just place it right here. Okay. So I'm checking the front panel here, I'm checking the side panel, everything looks pretty good. So let's work on the legs next. So I'll click on the cylinder button right here and let's start working in the front panel here. So uh, let's bring up our hypershade and I'll take this transparent material, hold down the middle mouse button and drag it over to the cylinder and I'll minimize the hypershade. So I'm going to take my poly cylinder here and let's change the radius, I'm sorry, the subdivisions axis to 12. And I'm going to scale this whole thing down and move it over. Well, actually, I'll scale it up a little bit more here. All right, I'm going to right click, go to vertex, select all the vertices at the top here and move them up. Press R, scale them in from the center, and then hit W and move them over. Oops, try that again. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to work on this in the perspective panel. I'm going to add some edge loops. So I'll go to Edit Mesh and then Insert Edge Loop Tool. And I'll add an edge loop right here towards right before you hit the top of this cylinder. Hit Q, double click on the top loop, hit R and scale that in. And I'm going to move it up a little bit. Scale it in. And I'll add another edge loop, so I'll go to Edit Mesh, Insert Edge Loop Tool, and add another edge loop right here. And I'll double click on the edge loop that's in the middle of these three edge loops. And I'll scale it in slightly, move it up slightly. So now we're going to have a nice rounded edge to the top of this cylinder, especially when we smooth it. Now we'll do the same thing to the bottom. I'm going to go to Edit Mesh, Insert Edge Loop Tool, and I'll add a edge loop towards the bottom here. Now I'll hit Q for my selection tool, double click on the bottom loop right here, press R and scale in from the center. Alright, now I'll go to Edit Mesh, Insert Edge Loop Tool, one more edge loop right here, press R and scale this out slightly. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So I'll right click on this, go to object mode. And let's see here. I'm going to turn on the grid in my front panel here. So I'll click right here, turn on the grid. And I'm going to move the pivot point for this leg from the center of this cylinder to the center point of the grid here. So I'll press home on the keyboard. If you're on a PC, you're going to press Insert, 
If you have a short keyboard on a Mac, you're going to press function and the left arrow. Function plus the left arrow on your keyboard. All right, so I've got my pivot point. I can adjust my pivot point here. I'm going to hold down the X key so I can snap to the center of the grid right here. All right, I'll turn off the adjust pivot. So I'll press home once again. Now I'm going to duplicate this across the x-axis here. So I'm going to go up to edits and then go down to duplicate special and go to the options box and then let go. I'm going to make sure uh, we're done with this leg so we can leave it at copy. And the big thing you want to make sure is it says on the scale row right here, the first the first box says negative one. So we can hit apply and then close and here's our second leg over here. All right, so I have been pretty lazy and I haven't been naming these objects. So let's see here, we've got the body. Let's click on the head. All right, let's rename this to the head and antenna. I don't know how to spell antenna. No time to look it up. So um, whatever that is at the top, I'm not even sure what that is. Um, OK, body. And this is his right leg. So we're going to do leg and then right. And then I'll do click on this one over here. And we'll do, oops, click on this, go leg, and then left. Now why do I put leg first? Because when you're looking at a list of items, you want these two legs to be right next to each other. So that's why I put the leg part of the word of the name first, and then left and right are second. Because if you have, if you say left leg, right leg, then when you're looking at a list of all the objects, they're in different places on that list. So it's a little bit easier to organize by putting the um, leg part first. All right. Let's dive into the arms here. So I've placed the arm, uh, another version of the arm, outside of the drawing here. Because it's going to be easier to model this arm if it's going straight up and down. If we have to model this at an angle, it's a little bit more difficult. So I drew a second arm right here to make our job a little bit easier. So I will click on the sphere right here. And I'll press W and move this over. And I'll go over here to Polysphere 4 under the inputs. And I'm going to do the same thing I've been doing this whole time. I'm going to change the subdivision axis to 12. And then I'll change the subdivision height to 8. Now I'm going to scale this down, so I'll press R, and I'll move this over. OK. Let's bring up our hypershade. All right, so I'll minimize the hypershade. OK, so let's select. Let's see here. Let's select the two faces, the two sets, uh, this row and the row below it of uh, faces. And let's see how this looks when we extrude it. I have my extrusion now. I'll press W and move this straight down. And I think that's the size that I'm looking for. So I'll press R and scale this down to match up with the reference image. All right, I'm going to create another sphere. And I'll do the same thing. Subdivision axis, 12. Subdivision height, 8. And press return. Scale this down. Move it over. Scale it down some more. Always scaling from the center. OK. So let's see. I want to make sure that these two things are lined up, the arm and the hand here. So you can see I'm lining up the center line here with the center line on the arm. And 
And let's see here. I forgot to add my transparent material onto this. Okay, next, sta next step. Uh, we need to press F to frame the sphere so that we can accurately select the faces that we need. And let's see here. I need to select. Let's see, I'm going to go back to the side panel. And I'm going to select these faces here. So I'll right click on this object, go to face, and select these faces right here on the sides. Okay. So I actually don't want all of these selected. What I want, I just needed to know which faces, because it's hard to figure out what is going along the x-axis and the z-axis when you're looking in the perspective panel. So with this selection, I'm going to click on this face, hold down shift, click on this, and I'm basically going to select eight faces that kind of form a triangular shape on the side of this sphere right here. I'll press extrude and go down. I'll press R for my scale tool and scale this in a little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to select all these faces on the opposite side and do the same thing. So two, four, six, eight faces. I will press extrude, go out, press R, and scale this stuff in. I'm going to press W, move this out a little bit more. Right here, I'm going to extrude these faces out. So it kind of blows the faces up much larger than what we need. So I'll press R for my scale tool and scale this all down. Press W and move it into place. Maybe scale it that way a little bit. I'm going to press extrude again and go out, press R, scale all that stuff down, press W and kind of move it into position. Let me scale this some more. Press extrude again and go down, press R and scale everything in, press W and move it over to the right a little bit. Alright, so I'm going to go to edge here, double click on this edge, and let's just to make a little adjustment here. Okay. And let's see. I'm going to select, I go right click and go to face and select these eight faces on the bottom here. And I'll extrude these down one more time. Hit R, scale them in. Hit W, move them over and down and in a little bit more. All right, so originally I thought maybe I'll extrude these at the same time as those, but I think the easier thing to do would be to right click, uh, I'm sorry, stay in face mode, select the whole side here and delete it. Right click, go to object mode. I've got my pivot point right here in the center. And now I can just go to edit and then go to duplicate special and go to the options box. Right here, I've got my copy. Scale X is negative one. I'll hit apply, close. So we've reached the halfway point on the modeling process for Gur right here. So now is a good time to save your work and we will finish up this modeling process in part two.